so maybe I'll start before. So the, lympho the, the lymphatic system is composed of lymph nodes and the spleen, uh, but one interesting aspect of uh, the lymphatic system is the appearance of new uh, lymphatic structures which we see in every chronically inflamed tissue. And these are termed tertiary lymphatic structures or ectopic lymphoid-like structures. And, uh, and we... Uh, okay. So, and we call them uh, ectopic lymphoid-like structures or ELS in short. So from now on, whenever I say ELS, I actually mean, this is, looks good, excellent. So I actually mean these structures which really look like a lymph node, but this is not a lymph node because it is present in the liver and the normal liver does not contain lymph nodes. So, so why is it present here? It present, it, this one is present here because this patient has the hepatitis C and we often see the formation of these ELSs in such uh, in such patients. So, um, <clears throat> so, so what about these ELSs? Uh, they, they are thought to be the frontal command posts of the immune system. So when there is a disease that needs to be attacked, it is better to form these frontal command posts at the zone uh, of war. Uh, I don't like the word, but, uh, but this is how the, the body works, right? In cancer, they're thought to provide a protective role, facilitating an anti-tumor uh, immune response. And indeed, uh, Jim Moulin and many other people after him uh, realized that the presence of these uh, ELSs in colorectal cancer, for instance, and, and melanoma is associated with a better prognosis, indicating that they can fight or resist tumor genesis. So we are interested in liver cancer and we set out to study the role of these ELSs in human liver cancer. And together with uh, Eugene Oshida in Mount Sinai in New York, we analyze them. And, and when you analyze the ELSs in the liver, in the tumor itself, then you get the usual result. But when you analyze the presence of ELSs in the liver parenchyma, where you most often see them, then you see the opposite picture. The more ELSs you have, the better your prognosis. And this was verified in, in different cohorts. So, so how can ELSs be pro-tumorogenic? Or why are they sometimes good and sometimes bad? And in order to understand this, uh, we developed uh, this mouse model. And this was in collaboration with Klaus Rajewski's lab and later on uh, with Michael Karin, which, uh, which did actually the same uh, experiment. <clears throat> and, and we developed mice. I won't tell you about the strategy. This has been published already. These are the mice. You see they develop ELSs in, their, in their, their liver, and they're very similar morphologically to the ones that are present in human livers. And when we assessed the different cell types that are present, this is the human, this is the mouse, uh, you see that they, they are very similar, despite the fact that the mouse has a tail. It's, an, it's, a, it's chubbier, a, nice, a nicer creature in general. But the, these mice not only develop these ELSs in their livers, they also develop liver tumors. And these are very bad. So you see here, there are multiple <coughs> tumors which develop in these mice, which have multiple ELSs. And this Complex analysis basically wants to show you that the tumors that develop in these mice are highly aggressive primary liver cancers. So now we have a model and we can begin to, to understand the role of uh, ELSs in, uh, in, in mice. And to, to make this short, what we found is that the ELSs form niches in which the HCC progenitor grow. And this happens in the mice. And this was actually puzzling for me as a pathologist because we never see these things happen in humans. But uh, Shlomi Finkin that did uh, this experiment in collaboration with a pathologist in, in Basel, that he stained for these HCC progenitor cells and looked specifically at ELSs. And he could easily find 
these clusters of HCC progenitor cells, and he used multiple markers to prove this, which are present within the ELSs, and, and within the ELSs, the morphology is not classical. So you can only identify them if you look for the specific markers. This is why uh, pathologists like me were completely blind uh, to them so far. <clears throat> so, so how can we prove that these ELSs are protomorogenic in this case? And what Shlomi did, he just bred our mice with mice which completely lack adaptive immune cells, and this results in the absence of ELSs, which are mostly com composed of B cells and T cells, the major components of the adaptive immune system. And this uh, proved uh, Shlomi's hypothesis, sorry, because you can see here that these are the mice that have ELSs. This is a tumor number, for example. And you see that when you remove the ELSs, tumor numbers return to control. And this is for, for tumor number, and this is for tumor mass. Everywhere you measure this, also tumor aggressiveness, you see that if you remove these ELSs from the system, then you dramatically reduce tumorogenesis. So, so this provides a window enabling us maybe to prevent the formation of liver tumors in, in, in humans. But in order to, to use this as a preventive tool, we need to understand why are ELSs sometimes protumorogenic and why sometimes they are antitumorogenic. So to, to summarize what I showed you so far, ELSs were previously known to be anti-cancer effectors. Hepatic ELSs can be protumorogenic, and this is by forming niches that support HCC growth. I'll, I skipped this part about uh, targeting ELS-derived cytokines, proving at least one of the mechanisms th uh, through which uh, ELSs are protumorogenic. <clears throat> so, and, and, and I think the key question that we are now trying to study is why are they sometimes good and sometimes bad? And, and, and this is important for us because if we can identify, discern the bad ones from the good ones, we can use this as a biomarker for targeting a specific patient population. And cancer treatment today is a lot about biomarkers. Developing biomarkers is the way to progress with uh, cancer treatment. At least this is how uh, I view it through the microscope. So, so we wanted to get a handle on what is the composition of the bad and the good ELSs. And to this end, we use single cell RNA sequencing. And this, for a pathologist, is really a fantastic tool because it enables you to see the transcriptome of each specific cell in, uh, in the group of cells that you are analyzing. So we isolated uh, all the hematopoietic cells from hepatic ELSs and characterize them. And as controls, we use the spleens, which are really a huge lymph nodes and are, are very easily accessed from, from the same mice. And when you, so this is the map that you get from the spleen, and then this, this is the map that you get from the ELSs. And when you combine both of them, you can see the difference. And one thing that immediately captures your eye is that there are many more CD8 T cells in this cluster than in this cluster. And this is done in collaboration with uh, Oren Parnas and uh, Judah Schlesinger in, in Oren's lab. Uh, so so what, what signifies this cluster of T cells, which is present in the protumorogenic ELSs? And, and, and this is what comes out. And you know, there was a Nobel Prize recently, so you don't lose these things. There are many exhausted T cells which are present in these uh, ELSs. So, so can we prove that this is T cell exhaustion? And Einat Cinnamon, that is uh, uh, leading this project, Dr. Einat uh, Cinnamon, I should say, uh, stained the, these ELSs. And you see, uh, you see the, so the, the, the DAPI staining here marks the ELS. The brown part here are the tumor cells which are growing within it. It is not a bird, this is a tumor. Um, and, and you see here, the, 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 the CD8 PD1 positive uh, uh, T cells. And, 
Uh, and here, we're looking for the ones which are proliferative. It's very hard for me. Yeah, 67 CD8 uh, double positive cells. And you can see, actually, that the T cells are not positive for Ki67. And this is the best proof that they are exhausted. They're not proliferating because they're tired, just like you after these uh, three lectures. And is there PD-1 and PD-L1 in the system? And maybe just I'll, I'll point to this group of tumor cells, and you see that it is the tumor cells, and obviously even other cells that secrete PD-L1. So tumor cell-derived PD-L1 is likely exerting T cell exhaustion in these pro-tumorogenic ELSs. <clears throat> and these dogs, these are two exhausted dogs, but there is a difference, right? This one looks like you can awaken him, eat up uh, very fast. This looks like it is very, very exhausted. And can you differentiate it between uh, truly exhausted and lightly exhausted cells? So Pokken and Wary uh, devised a, a mechanism uh, to, to identify these cells. And, and, and briefly, what we see that in the ELSs, unlike, so, so, so these are old spleens, and you see that the exhausted T cells in, in spleens from old mice are like, the, are like this dog. They're very exhausted, very hard to reinvigorate. But the exhausted T cells in the, in the ELSs, they are lightly exhausted. So maybe they can be reinvigorated, and Ina tested this, and she treated the mice with uh, anti-PD-1, uh, antibodies, <clears throat> and this uh, you see here resulted in uh, T cell reinvigoration. And maybe more important is the fact that uh, it dramatically reduces tumor load, proving that T cell exhaustion within these ELSs is one of the mechanisms through which the ELSs become. Uh, pro-tumorogenic rather than anti-tumorogenic. And if you awaken these T cells up, then you can turn the bad ELSs into good ELSs. <clears throat> and uh, I think I said uh, all of this, but, but maybe now we have this biomarker which we're looking for. Maybe we can treat as a preventive treatment patients that have multiple ELSs in their liver but only the ones in which the ELSs show uh, T cell exhaustion. Of course, the fact that we proved it in the mouse does not mean that this will translate uh, to the human, and we're looking for, for more proof in the mice before we'll try to persuade somebody to, to take this into a clinical trial. I have a, a friend in Bologna that uh, is now doing something similar, and maybe we can retrospectively test uh, this... Uh, <coughs> uh, this uh, is this strategy. So um, another question, I, I, another story I wanted, another unpublished story I wanted to share with you, uh, and I'll try to do this very briefly, is that we're trying also to understand how are these uh, bad ELSs formed? What are the signals th that invoke their formation in the liver? And uh, this is a complex scheme. Um, kind of uh, summarizing what we know about how ELSs are formed. And I think what you want to remember from this is that ELSs are formed through the, the crosstalk, the discussion between many cell types, which eventually recruit lymphocytes into this uh, area where the ELS is supposed to be formed. <coughs> and we looked for multiple cytokines, and we did this uh, in both the mouse and, and the human, you see it's evolving. And, uh, and one of the cytokines which caught our attention was CCL20 simply because it was expressed in the HCC progenitor cells and not by the immune cells. So it was a good candidate uh, to look for. Uh, to prove this, we, uh, we just eliminated uh, the receptor for this, uh, for this molecule and this resulted in a dramatic reduction uh, in, the, in the ELS number. So, so this proves that signaling through this uh, chemokine receptor, which is the only receptor for CCL20, is important for the formation of the ELSs. And also overexpression, this is a, a different experiment. 
here Ella Nazirov, which is uh, doing this project, overexpressed CCL20 in livers, and you see that you rapidly get these ELSs with HCC progenitor within them already in a very early stage, suggesting that the CCL20-derived ELSs are the ones that are best in promoting the growth of HCCs. And here you can see that when you, uh, um, <coughs> that when you reduce the, the ELS number, the CCL20-dependent ELSs in the mice, you also markedly reduce uh, HCCs. <coughs> so uh, I, I'll, I'll summarize this part and say that uh, CCR6 is uh, CCL6, CCL20, this axis is important for ELS uh, neogenesis and HCC formation in mice. And, uh, and now we want to use this system, the same system, to look for more cytokines and more cell types to identify which of the cells which are brought into the liver through this um, ordering by these specific cytokines which eventually form these bad or good ELSs. And maybe if we know the composition of cytokines, we can not only eliminate the bad ELSs, but invoke the formation of, of, of good ELSs. And, and let me just go to, uh, to my uh, thank you slide <coughs> and uh, allow you to have maybe a break now. Uh, so I want to thank uh, uh, Inat Cinnamon and Ella Nazirov who are doing these two last projects which I discussed and Shlomi Finkin who is a, pr a previous po uh, a PhD student in the lab who is now doing a fantastic uh, postdoc in, uh, in, in New York and soon will be coming back to Israel and uh, hopefully will be recruited to an excellent uh, university. Uh, Oren Parnas, uh, Orit Papo, Inon, who is uh, sitting here, um, Matthias Heikenwelder from uh, Heidelberg, which is an excellent collaborator, uh, our funding agencies. And this is a, a very old picture, but uh, we can, you can see where we're located at least. So uh, thanks a lot. <coughs>